I've had many requests from subscribers to explain how to set up a dump load for solar systems. In this video, I will show you exactly how to add and program a voltage sensitive relay, including how to safely use high power devices like a water heater with an external relay. Here's why you might need this. Imagine it's a sunny day, your batteries are fully charged, but your solar panels are still producing energy that's going unused. Instead of wasting that power, you could heat water or run another useful device. That's what we call a dump load. It captures excess solar energy and puts it to good use. We can easily achieve this by using a voltage sensitive relay, which is basically a switch triggered by battery voltage. When your battery reaches a certain voltage, the relay switches on, activating your dump load. When the voltage draws back down, the relay switches off again. Let me demonstrate. We are charging our battery slowly. And when the battery is almost full, the relay will close and the dump load, in this case the light, is activated. And when the battery level drops below a certain voltage, the relay opens again and deactivates the dump load. Here's how to connect it. Connect the battery positive to the relay's positive input terminal. You should use an inline fuse for safety. Then add a jumper wire to the voltage plus. Connect the battery negative to the grounding terminal. Then connect your dump load between the relay normally open contacts. I recommend taking power from your battery with another fuse, based on the current of the load. The next step is to program the relay. The relay has four programming menus, labeled 1 to 4. In menu 1, these are the delays for open and close times. Leave this menu as is, no changes are needed. In menu 2, this is where we are going to change some settings. Let's set the relay's voltage trigger points. Set the upper limit to 13.4 volts. This is where your batteries are essentially fully charged. And set the lower limit to 13.2 volts. This ensures the battery relay turns off before draining your battery too much. You might have to fine tune these values based on your load. In menus 3 and 4, we are not going to change anything. Let's now test the relay functionality with the bench power supply. It should turn on at 13.4 volts. The relay is now on and it should turn off at 13.2 volts. I recommend choosing a dump load such as a heating element that's close to the power output of your solar panels. For example, if you have a 600 watt solar panel, your dump load should be around 600 watts. If you pick a load that's too large, the relay would constantly turn on and off, which is not ideal. You can add a time delay in the settings if you wish. Another thing to keep in mind is that you have a small battery, the voltage will drop significantly if a large load is applied. Try to keep the discharge current at 0.2C. So if you have a 100 amp hour battery, you should only draw 20 amps from it. This is to reduce the voltage drop at the battery terminals, which will trigger the relay to turn off, even if your battery is fully charged. Now, the relay inside this voltage sensitive device can only handle up to 30 amps. That's plenty 
if you're using it with household AC power. To connect an AC load like a water heater or a hair dryer. However, at low voltages like 12 volts, 30 amps will only give you 360 watts. Not a lot if you're heating water or running a heavier load. So to safely use bigger DC loads, you'll want to add an extra relay. I like to use a solid state relay or SSR. Solid state relays are great because they have no moving parts and can handle much higher currents without wearing out. The terminals on this relay are also bigger, so you can fit larger wires. Perfect for DC loads. So here's how it works. You pick an SSR rated for AC or DC. This one is rated for DC and one for AC. I will pick the AC one for demonstration purposes. It activates when it senses 3 to 30 volts DC on the input. So here's how you connect the SSR with the voltage sensitive relay. Just as before, we are going to use the normally open contacts. Use 12 volts from this connection and do it to the COM port. From the COM port, another wire will leave to the plus of the SSR. And then the grounding signal will return to the grounding connection on the voltage sensitive relay. The output of your inverter goes to the plus on the SSR and then the other side goes to the resistor and then back to the inverter. This setup lets you use much higher power devices safely and reliably. Now I've connected the solid state relay to the voltage sensitive relay. Now all the power will come through this cable. And these cables will just be the signal wires, so very low current. Let me trigger the voltage sensitive relay, which will trigger the external relay. The voltage was 13.4 volts. And the turn off voltage was 13.2 volts. I hope this clears things up. If you would like me to make a detailed video about adding water heaters with a thermostat, let me know in the comments. And as always, the links to the relay and the SSR will be in the description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.